Ron, not much happening today in court, but are you happy to see the charges come here to federal court? We are. Uh, the federal system, as I've come to find out, moves much faster. And the family, Jim Carpenter and myself, are here, along with our attorney, Joe McCullough, uh, to try to see that uh, justice is done. And we intend to see this thing through, and we appreciate the uh, federal prosecutors and what they're trying to do. Is this the first time you've seen the man who shot Martha? No, this is the second time. We saw him at his initial bond hearing. Um, how is she doing? Martha is doing remarkably well. She's actually ahead in her recovery process down at the Shepherd Center in Atlanta, which we have come to find out is a preeminent place for spinal cord injuries. Uh, that is the place for Martha to be, and she and her mom uh, are doing great down there. They have lots of uh, love and support from uh, folks all over who've come to visit, and uh, so we're real excited uh, about her progress. We got a lot of response over the weekend. People were just thrilled. She's taking an online class through Skype. Is that, <clears throat> yes. that working? Yes. Thanks to the university, uh, Dr. Pistides and Dr. Brewer were able to get one of her classes changed to a room that would allow for Skyping and so forth. So one of her classes that she had on Tuesday, she is able to now rejoin her classmates. And so every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon from 4.30 to or 4.20 to quarter to six, she's right there with the classroom. So she, as Dr. Pastides has offered to do, he is trying to keep Martha involved with the university. Her education is very important to her and her love for South Carolina. So uh, we're delighted to see that happen. What subject is that? Do you, do you recall? <laughs> Um, USC 101 or something. Uh, okay. it's, it's the introductory, yes. uh, it's a requirement for all uh, students entering the university. I imagine that has to be sort of a great encouragement and kind of space of normal life given everything that's happened for her. That's right. We're uh, in trying to provide some sense of normalcy. This was a uh, uh, this was something the university offered that we uh, sincerely appreciate and Martha certainly does as well. Do you think the city has taken enough steps? You know, in your last press conference, the last time you addressed us, you talked a little bit about some of the changes you wanted to see. Some of those have taken place now. They are monitoring the cameras. They started live monitoring over the weekend. USC has restarted that shuttle. But do you think more needs to be done still? The last time we had the press conference was, of course, pre-election. And as you can imagine, lots of things are said before an election and so forth. Lots of feel-good meetings. Uh, the family and I, we all attended several uh, meetings by well-meaning individuals talking about needed changes or the fact that things have been going on there with a criminal, criminal element for a long time that had not been addressed. So we stand before you today to say the family intends to try to see these things through. And we would call on some of the people that we've had the opportunity to get in front of to go ahead and make some concrete adjustments or new rules or directions and initiatives that can be done. Uh, part of the thing that we came up with, the Martha's Rules, brought out several things that can be done that requires no legislative action whatsoever. So we're somewhat uh, uh, justice, the wheels of justice move slowly as we've come to to, uh, to know, but we are anxious to see some other things get done here, and we think uh, that they can be and hopefully will be uh, uh, before the holiday season is over. Have you felt like since the election that some of these sort of feel-good meetings, the contact you've had with city leaders, has that dwindled? Well, the city leaders have other things on their plate, and we realize this is just uh, one uh, one incident, but it's extremely important to the family uh, because we don't want to have any more incidents and senseless tragedies like what happened to Martha happened to some other student or for that matter some other citizen uh, in uh, the city of Columbia. So while it's a five points problem it's also a, uh, a criminal element that definitely needs to be addressed and as the family has come to learn uh, a lot more than we actually wanted to learn about all of this uh, we hope that we can provide in some small measure to see that some concrete things are done that will protect the citizens of this city include the th thousands of students from around the state and elsewhere who come to Columbia. To Absolutely. To college. Uh, these gentlemen standing here with me, all of us have, uh, have participated uh, in uh, five points for many years and we would like to do that in the future. So uh, 
We think it's vital for the various elements to come together as they said they would do and fashion some concrete form of constructive uh, refinements that will provide a more safe haven down in Five Points. What thoughts went through your mind when you saw this Michael Smith standing there today in a jumpsuit? Uh, a strong uh, um, anger. The family still has a lot of anger, of course, because we we are disappointed that this hardened criminal has shown no signs of remorse for what he did, and um, we think he should have been in prison to begin with. Uh, unfortunately, the lackadaisical criminal system as it's defined with some of the juvenile rules allowed him to be out, and a convicted felon was roaming the streets, uh, and uh, a senseless tragedy occurred. What are your feelings on him pleading not guilty today? Uh, as our attorneys have told us, that was more protocol than it was anything else. So. You plan to be in the courtroom and follow this through? I mean, this is something the family wants to see justice done. This is something that Jim and Joe and I can do. Again, a very small measure that we can do on behalf of the family, but hopefully we can do this on behalf of the citizenry here in Columbia. Uh, these type of uh, these type of criminal elements have got to be stopped. And what's the prognosis now for Martha being able to walk? Martha will never walk again. Her spinal cord was severed by the bullet, uh, but she is being given a wonderful opportunity to lead a very productive life as she learns the skills that uh, the Shepherd Center teaches her. So while we are obviously devastated, as, as is she, uh, we are hopeful that Martha uh, uh, sees the opportunities that are uh, available. Several people have come forward who have suffered similar injuries and have introduced themselves to Martha and have shared their stories with her. And it's been an inspiration to both Martha and the family. So uh, while we're all still looking for something good to come out of this, we're hopeful that perhaps Martha's mission may, some bright things may be uh, in store for her and that she can share her story and be an inspiration to others. You said she's tough. She continues to kind of fight. And... She and her mother are tough as nails and uh, they are, have firm resolve. Uh, Martha uh, will hopefully be coming home to us before Christmas and then we'll spend the next few months trying to get acclimated. Uh, and then she uh, has some of her classmates and sorority sisters who want to room with her next fall. They have already found a handicapped uh, apartment that they have put the deposit mount on. So she hopes to uh, rejoin her classmates next fall.